Hello and a warm welcome to Clare College Cambridge Virtual Open Day. My name is Tim Chesters and I'm the Arts Admissions Tutor here at Clare. The other face you'll see during this presentation belongs to Professor Howard Griffiths, who is my Science Admissions Tutor counterpart. Firstly, why should you consider applying to Cambridge? Well, because we think we represent one of the finest academic institutions in the world with a range of expert teachers, uh, together with the way that we deliver teaching through small group supervisions. And of course, this is all based around the interest and expertise in research and the superb facilities that we're able to provide for those activities here in Cambridge. Now, the focus today isn't going to be so much uh, the university itself as a particular uh, part of the collegiate university, uh, namely Clare College. And you might ask, well, um, what is the difference between um, college and the university? Well, you could think of a college as being a little bit like a mini uh, campus at another university. It's where students are accommodated, it's where uh, they have access to dining and uh, recreation. Um, but it's also, and this is a bit different to the campus model elsewhere, it's also where you receive a lot of your teaching, uh, especially small group uh, teaching, where your individual needs and development are taken care of. Colleges are responsible for admitting students and also for their um, both their academic and their pastoral care. The role of the university, on the other hand, is to determine the course content. So the content, the material you'll study as part of your degree, um, will not vary significantly de depending on which college you're at. All the colleges come together to, to study the same content in, in lectures, that is large group teaching, seminars, and in the cases of the sciences, practicals and projects. The university also sets and marks the examinations. They are organised centrally by the university and it also awards the degrees. So why Clare College? Well, we're the second oldest college in Cambridge. We have remarkable gardens and architecture. We have a very good history academically and currently amongst many of the fellowship. And I think even more important than the long history, although some people find that, that, that very long history very attractive, even more important than that, it's a very forward-looking college. It combines tradition with uh, a very forward-looking attitude to uh, inclusivity and uh, diversity. All the way back to our foundress, Lady Elizabeth de Clare, um, who obviously herself was a, was a woman uh, and who founded the college in order to um, promote the learning among, uh, learning among poor uh, scholars. More recently, we were one of the first colleges to admit women uh, in Cambridge uh, and we were also pioneers in outreach projects aimed at primary school teachers. Clare College was one of the first colleges to really embrace the idea that by going into primary schools or inviting primary school children to come and visit uh, Clare we might raise aspiration uh, amongst more disadvantaged children. Aspiration not just to come to Cambridge or Clare but, but to go to university full stop. Worth mentioning, I think, that over the next uh, four or five years at Clare, there will be some disruption as the oldest part of our college is, uh, is refurbished. Um, and you can find out more about that refurbishment plan um, uh, on our website. We have many distinguished alumni, as you can see illustrated here, uh, but particularly, I suppose, our, uh, we'd like to draw attention to the activities of David Attenborough and you can view those not only through our website uh, but also um, on the on the admission site uh, if, you, if you if you visit there you'll be able to uh, have several videos of David Attenborough explaining how Claire inspired him to uh, to study in the uh, in the sciences. Claire it should be said is committed to offering places to candidates with the highest intellectual potential and this comes regardless, irrespective of where you're from, your social, racial, religious or financial background. What we're interested in is, is your, uh, your own talent, ability and potential in the subject for which you apply. We are absolutely committed to selecting the best of you and then through the uh, supervision, the college-based teaching, we hope to uh, give you a... Uh, the support and background that you need 
to cover the material for lectures that are given through departments. And because the fellows are world experts, and you, as you can see illustrated there, sharing that knowledge is one of the vital roles of being a member of a college, both for the fellows and for the students. Claire is also renowned for some of our extracurricular activities. In particular there, we see illustrated the choir, and so music is considered to be one of our strengths, uh, as well as, of course, all the aspects of sport, drama, and other uh, engagement activities that one might expect with any community of this sort. We're also known for our very strong support network for being a friendly, welcoming uh, college. Um, offering excellent pastoral support, uh, both when it comes to work problems and also non-work problems. Every student when they arrive is, is assigned uh, an academic director of studies who takes care of the progression of their, of their degree uh, and their, organises their teaching. And you can go to that person also for help with things like essay writing or if you're having some problems with general aspects of the course, uh, then, then your DOS, your Director of Studies, will always be on hand to help you. Every student, when they arrive, is also assigned a pastoral tutor, as we call them, somewhat confusingly. Uh, this person is not responsible for your academic development, but does offer uh, support when it comes to uh, non-academic difficulties you might run into. Cambridge is a fairly intense place, and combining your academic and non-academic activities um, can be a very busy thing and some people find it a little overwhelming. Well, Claire has a really very experienced group of tutors who are there to, to support you. should also say that other uh, types of support are provided by the student body. We have a very strong tradition of peer-to-peer -peer support in the student uh, network uh, here at Claire. Um, all of that and the work of the tutors is underpinned by uh, our excellent nurse, Helen, um, who also uh, stays in the college uh, and is, is on hand to, to help with, uh, with, with all aspects of, of physical and mental health. In addition to these, um, we have a, a strong bursarial system of financial uh, support as well. Uh, we'd like to look after our, our students um, financially, particularly in cases of financial hardship. Should be mentioned that in addition, alongside these um, uh, services at, at Clare, uh, we should mention the central university organisations, the Counselling Service and the uh, Disability Resource Centre. In general, Cambridge, we're looking for the brightest and best students, irrespective of your background. Uh, and specifically, we want to match your academic ability and your, uh, your projected ability to meet the subject requirements, but also against your genuine enthusiasm, interest and motivation for the subject. And what we really need is that the subject you're chosen is one that you're absolutely dedicated to. It's not one that's been suggested that you ought to study. You really are enthused about that particular subject. And it's not because your parents say you ought to be doing it. Some subjects uh, require a level of vocational uh, commitment, for example, medicine and veterinary medicine, and we would need to see uh, some evidence uh, of that. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the application process. You need to choose a subject, as I've said, that you're passionate about, uh, and that will involve taking a close look at the course uh, details. Now, as I've said, the university, not the colleges, organises course content uh, at Cambridge, so if you want to get a really idea of a good idea of what it's like to study, say, history or uh, natural sciences here uh, at Clare, then you're best going to the faculty websites to find out more about what those courses involve. Um, we will be uh, really on the lookout for your knowledge of the course and your commitment to the idea of studying this particular course in its detail. Um, so the more you can find out about the course before you apply, uh, the better. You can look at the course details on the website, as I've said. You can also talk to staff and students uh, in our virtual Q&As. Once you've got an idea of the subject you'd like to study, you'll need to choose a college. Um, I've already given some reasons uh, for choosing uh, Clare, but I just want to sort of pan out a little bit and think about the, the college uh, choice more generally. There are 29 undergraduate colleges in Cambridge, and they're all a bit different. They differ in terms of the accommodation and facilities that they offer, 
they also differ somewhat in appearance. Some are, are, are very historic, like Claire, others more modern. And there are pros and cons of each. They also differ in their size. Um, Clare, I think, is a medium-sized college. There are some very small colleges and very, some very large ones. And I think you need to ask yourself when you're applying, what do I want out of college life? Might I, for example, find a very small college a little claustrophobic? Or would I like the intimacy of, uh, of a small college? Uh, when it comes to a big college, that college might be very well financially uh, resourced. There might be lots and lots and lots of people to meet and things to do. But you might feel a little more lost uh, in a very large institution of that kind. We think Claire offers a nice happy medium between those two. You need to go on instinct to a certain extent. I've said that you need to inform yourself and that remains the case. Um, but it's really important, I think, that you can imagine yourself uh, in the college and that your gut instinct is telling you to go there. Really important point about open applications. Not everybody, even after they've informed themselves, really knows exactly which college they would like to choose and that's completely understandable. And that's why Cambridge offers you the, 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 the option uh, of submitting an open application where you don't actually single out an individual uh, college uh, as a first choice. What happens then is that um, the central admissions office will allocate you uh, a college. So it sort of chooses on your, on your behalf. And it's really worth stressing that admissions tutors like me and Howard um, we have no idea when the application eventually arrives with us whether you were originally somebody who'd chosen Claire or whether you were somebody who'd put in an ap open application. And we're not, we're not actually very interested in that. Um, so you don't do yourself any disadvantage at all by putting in an open application uh, to, to, to our college or to any other college. Now, the admissions process really sort of starts formally at the beginning of October but of course by then you should already have been thinking about developing your application and your uh, personal statement and so on. But for those of you considering medicine uh, you need to register for the, the BMAT uh, pre-interview assessment by the 1st of October um, and you also need to re uh, registration, register for other uh, pre-interview assessments by the 15th of October and those assessments will be taken on the 4th November this year. Uh, we should point out that there, these assessments are largely in the sciences but as you can see from the list here uh, that also includes eco economics and land economy. I've mentioned the UCAS application deadline, there it is again the 15th of October. Um, probably the element you'll need to work on personally the most is your uh, UCAS personal statement and your school might have already started to talk to you about how you might frame your UCAS a personal statement, which you'll have to write up um, irrespective of whether you, you eventually apply to Cambridge or not. This is, this is going to be part of your, your UCAS application more generally. In it, we would just encourage you to write uh, frankly and honestly and with integrity. Um, there's no point trying to strike a pose in your UCAS statement, uh, trying to live up to some expectation of what a Cambridge student might be like. Um, by and large, there isn't such a Cambridge type um, and you would do yourselves very few uh, favours by pretending to be it. Um, so be yourself, write with integrity and, and try to explain what your motivations are for uh, your interest in the, the course and what you've done about it. So if you're studying for an art subject, for example, uh, which involves a lot of reading like English or history or modern languages, then tell us what you've read, tell us what you've, you've done to go over and beyond um, the kinds of study that you will have already pursued uh, at uh, secondary school, um, so that we can see evidence of that curiosity and uh, drive we're looking for. Lots of people ask us about extracurricular activities and whether it's worth mentioning those. I think it is worth mentioning those as evidence of your ability to manage your time. Um, very often juggling these things alongside schoolwork is a sign that you're, you're good at managing time and that will be a skill that um, we will need to see uh, evidence of uh, when you get to Cambridge. Um, in and of themselves though I should stress that an extracurricular activity and prowess in a particular sport or in the choir or playing an instrument 
Um, while admirable in all kinds of other ways outside this process is not going to clinch anything when it comes to your application for Cambridge. We are interested overwhelmingly, as we've said, in your academic ability and potential. Now, there's a secondary questionnaire that you also must fill in uh, and you can submit a week later than the primary UCAS form. Uh, we recommend really that you try to get this completed as soon as possible. But this gives us this is a specific supplementary questionnaire specific to Cambridge, which is not seen by any of the other universities to which you may be applying. And this allows you to put a little bit of additional detail about why, which, uh, why you want to apply to Cambridge and which specific course. Because it may well be that the course you're applying for in Cambridge doesn't exactly match with the courses you may have in other institutions. And so this gives you an opportunity to say why you feel the Cambridge course is particularly tailored to your interests. So what information do we use to assess these applications once they come in? Well, as we've said, your academic record is obviously very important, as is your personal statement. In addition to these, uh, you will be uh, asked or your school will be asked to submit a reference for you. Um, this is always important that we, we get a sense of what your, your um, people who've looked after your education so far you know, think of your, your academic progress. Uh, it's especially important, I think, in this year where you're likely to have suffered quite substantial disruption to your teaching. This is the moment in the reference where I think it would be good if we could hear about that. I'll be saying a little bit more in a moment about how some subjects require uh, written work to be submitted, written work that you've done at school. Um, performance in any written assessment, whether that's a pre-interview assessment or, as I'll be saying in a moment, an at-interview assessment. Uh, all of this is then uh, weighed up in the context of a huge amount of data we receive about <clears throat> your background, um, the kinds of opportunities uh, you have had or haven't had, uh, the sort of school that you've attended and, and, and the record of your school so that we can judge fairly uh, how your uh, progression has gone uh, to date. Uh, we have a huge amount of contextual data about our applicants. It gets bigger every year, uh, and it's part of a very, very uh, concerted and holistic approach um, to fairness in uh, applications. Eventually, if you're invited for interview, obviously your interview uh, will be an important piece of information, but only one. Um, there's a tendency to think of the interview as being the kind of culmination, the, the, the moment at which, you know, life or death decisions are made. That's not the case. Uh, the interview is a small, if important, part of, the over, of this much bigger uh, judgment. Now, there may be uh, some assessments that will be offered at the time of interview, uh, and these, the further details of some of these will be made available uh, uh, as, as time goes on. Uh, and then, as it says here, that you may also be asked to submit some written work. Uh, in general, there's a list of those subjects there that, for which that might be needed. So let's just talk a little bit about these interviews. They ha mostly happen in the second week of December. You normally have two. They're normally between about 20 and 25 uh, minutes, although in certain subjects, for example, architecture, they last somewhat longer because they might have a, a portfolio element. They're always conducted by fellows of the college in conjunction with uh, associates of the college, um, uh, colleagues um, who perhaps work at a different college but come to help us, to jo join us as, to be part of the interviewing team at, at Clare. They are overwhelmingly academic and subject focused. Uh, there is such a thing as the what's called the, sometimes the tutorial interview where you have a more general conversation about what you've been doing. Um, certain other colleges uh, run tutorial interviews for their applicants. We don't. Uh, we're just interested in um, uh, academic subject focused interviews. And these interviews are a chance for us to find out more about you and also for you to find out a bit more about, about us. Um, to assess that fit, in other words, between you and, uh, and the college and, and, the, and the subject that you're applying for. The important thing to understand about an, an interview is that the interviewers will not be trying to catch you out. What we want you to do is to try to show how well you can think for yourself, how well you can you take 
basic knowledge which relates to the course which you're interested in and apply that knowledge, perhaps to new problems or new areas that we present uh, in the interview situation. And this, in a way, gives us a sense of how you might respond to the supervision system. But ultimately, we really want to you to be able to show your enthusiasm for your subject, your ability to think independently. Now, the entrance requirements are uh, set by the college are uh, basically standard across the university, although some they may differ in some other colleges. But typically, we ask for two A stars and an A for the sciences and economics. Um, and in, uh, for those applying for maths, uh, the typical offer includes also getting a grade one in step, uh, uh, in step, uh, which is the six term examination papers um, in both parts two and three. Now for the arts subjects and veterinary medicine, we ask for an A star and two A's. Uh, in general, for the, uh, across all subjects for the IB, uh, we have a target of 42 points overall, but particularly with 776 in your relevant higher level subjects. And of course there are other um, examination systems which we take into account whether within the UK or whether overseas uh, and, and these uh, all of these um, typical standards are available for inspection on the main university website. Now right at the end of the process the application outcome. Um, three things are likely to happen here one of three things. Uh, first of all, you might be made an offer and you might be made an offer from Claire and it will always be, um, if you haven't yet sat your final secondary school exams, it will always be a, co a, a conditional offer. Um, uh, so you, 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 you won't be offered an unconditional offer unless you're already what we call a post-qualification applicant, somebody who has already done their exams. A variant of that is you're being offered a place at another college. You might receive a letter from another college offering a place um, in the subject you've chosen to study. Um, this seems a bit puzzling, um, but this arises because of this system we have called the winter pool system, where let's say you've not been quite successful in, uh, in, in attaining a place at Clare, but we've nonetheless deemed your application to be strong enough to put it in the winter pool, where other colleges might come in uh, and look at your file and look at the, the notes we've made about your interview and all the rest of it and decide that they'd like to offer you a place. So you might, in the middle of January, receive a, an offer to, play, to read um, your subject at a college that is not the one that you originally applied for. Now, the other point I suppose to make is that you may be unsuccessful. It is highly competitive to apply to Cambridge. Unfortunately, we can only take one in five applicants, which means that some of you will uh, unfortunately not be offered a place. But it doesn't mean that in any way that you've failed. It's simply that we can't take all of you uh, wonderful young folk who apply. So don't be deterred. Um, there are many other very good universities around the country who will offer an excellent education. So, um, and so what we can do is hope that you will aspire to apply because we want you to give yourself the chance of coming here. Lots of opportunities to find out more today um, by acquiring a copy of the Undergraduate Prospectus, uh, looking at the, by looking at the Undergraduate Study website, by contacting the Central Cambridge Admissions Office or any college admissions office, including including ours, and also by uh, talking to our students uh, at the virtual Q&A. Here are some of the key uh, addresses, and it just remains me, for me to wish you a safe uh, and happy rest of this uh, rather unusual year, uh, and, and say also that I'm very much looking forward to welcoming you physically uh, to, to Claire when that becomes possible.